Let's get started on today's notes over function notation. So first, what is it? Function notation is the way a function is written. It's the way that it's notated. It is meant to give you more information in a clear and precise way. So in this first equation right here, this is how you're used to seeing equations written. y equals 3x minus 4. Here is an example of an equation written using function notation. What's the difference? I replace y with this right here. It's read as f of x. So f of x equals 3x minus 4. That's the only difference. So anytime you see f of x, I encourage my students, if you're ever confused, you can just write a y over it because f of x is just fancy schmancy for y. So in this table over here, I have some words, some vocabulary words that you, when you see them, you need to think of this either x variable or this y variable. So obviously x makes you, it's x, the x variable. It also represents the input and your domain is your set of x values. When you see these words over here in the right column, such as f of x, that means y. It's the output. And then range, that's your set of y values. So it's just a fancy schmancy way of writing equations. And it's using function notation. We can evaluate functions and function notation. Replace the x in parentheses with the input value for x. This becomes the x value you, you will use to generate a y value. So let's look at some examples. When I evaluate functions in function notation, so let's look at number one. I have f of x equals 2x plus 5. The problem says f of 3. So what did I replace x with? I replaced it with a 3, and I read it like that, f of 3. That means what I'm going to do is replace this x with the value of 3. So instead of 2 times x plus 5, first I replace it with parentheses, and then I put what I'm replacing the variable with, 3. And then I just solve it. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 5 is 11. So now let's write it as an ordered pair. When I input 3 for x, I get an output of 11 for y. 3 for x, I get 11 for y. So f of 3 equals 11. And I'm going to write that like this. f of 3 equals 11. Let's look at number 2. g of x, and a lot of times I like to say that g of x, it's like the function's name, right? f of x, the function's name is f of x. And number two, the function's name is g of x. So g of x equals 1 half x minus 2. I want to find g of negative 6. So what am I going to replace x with? Negative 6. So instead of 1 half x minus 2, I'm going to write 1 half times negative 6 minus 2. And then I just simplify using my order of operations. So 1 half times negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2, remember, same signs, add and keep. I get negative 5. So g of negative 6 equals negative 5. What does that mean? That means when I put an input value of negative 6, that was my x value, I got an output value of negative 5, which is my y value. Let's look at number 3 h of x equals 2x squared plus 3. I'm looking for h of negative 2. So what am I going to replace x with? Negative 2. I'm looking for, so this is fancy schmancy for, what is y when x is negative 2? That's another way you can look at it. What is y when x is negative 2? So I'm going to replace x with negative 2. The first thing I'm going to do is replace the variable with parentheses. Everything else stays there. Then inside the parentheses, I put what I'm replacing x with, which is negative 2. And then I just simplify using my order of operations. Negative 2 squared is 4. 
2 times 4 is 8, and 8 plus 3 is 11. So h of negative 2 is 11. What does that mean? That means when I put an input value of negative 2 into this equation, I get an output value of 11. Let's look at number 4. Okay f of x equals five, the absolute value of 5x minus 4. I'm looking for f of 0. So what am I going to do? I'm going to replace x with 0. So instead of 5 times x, 5 times 0 minus 4. And then I'm looking for the absolute value of that. So 5 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. I'm looking for the absolute value of negative 4. What is it? It's positive 4. So f of 0 is 4. That means when I put an input value of 0 for x, I get an output value of 4 for y. So I can write it as an ordered pair, but f of 0 is 4. What is the y value when x is 0? It's 4. Okay, let's move on to the next page. So I can also evaluate functions when given a graph. So the following gra graph represents the function of f of x. Evaluate the function for the indicated values. Again, this is fancy schmancy for what is y when x is negative 6. I'm going to write that down. What is y when x is negative 6? Okay, well, let's go to where x is negative 6 on our, remember, this is our x-axis. This is our y-axis. When x is negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's negative 6. Where is my graph? It's up here. Okay? So what is that ordered pair? Negative 6, positive 7. So what is f of negative 6? It's 7. Let's go to the next one. f of negative 4. Okay, I'm going to go to when x is negative 4. Where is my function? It's right here. That's where the graph is. What is that ordered pair? Negative 4, 0. So what is f of negative 4? It's 0. Let's look at number 7. f of 0. OK, where is x 0? It's right here. 0, 0 is my origin. Where is the graph? It's right down here. What is that ordered pair? 0, negative 2. So f of 0 means what is y when x is 0? What is y when x is 0? It's negative 2. Let's look at our last one. f of 9. If I go to where x is 9, well, my graph is actually right there. What is that ordered pair? 9, I don't go up or down any, so it's just 0. 9, 0. So what is f of 9? What is y when x is 9? It's 0. And that's how you can evaluate from a graph. Okay, last little bit. Evaluate when the domain is a list. So this is the last little bit. I'll try to get through it quickly. j of x equals negative 4x plus 1. We're looking for the range when your domain is negative 2, 0, and 3. So I'm looking for when x is negative 2, well, I can plug in negative 2 for x and simplify. We're looking for when x is 0, well, I can plug in 0 for x and solve for y. We're looking for when x is 3, well, I can plug in 3 for x and solve for y. And I would encourage you to pause this video and solve for your y values now. Okay, so you're back, hopefully. In this first one right here, negative 4 times negative 2 plus 1 is 9. Negative 4 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 4 times 3 plus 1 is negative 11. So here are my values, and so I would write them out in that same order. When the domain is negative 2, 0, and 3, my range is 9, 1, and negative 11. Okay, last one. h of x equals negative x squared. We're looking for the range when our domain is 
negative 4, negative 2, and negative 1. So for the first value of x, I'm going to input a value of negative 4. The second one, notice how I'm only replacing the variable with parentheses. I'm going to put an input value of negative 2. And the last one, I'm going to put an input value of negative 1. So go ahead and pause this video and find your y values. Okay, hopefully you're back. And your first y value, when x is negative 4, you should have gotten negative 16 for y. When x is negative 2, you should get negative 4 for y. And when x is negative 1, you should also get negative 1 for y. And I'm going to write them in that order. If this is the order that it's written in my domain, that's the order that you write it in your range. And this concludes your notes over function notation. I hope it was helpful.